is is exactly what Angtoria was, but it's fresher, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, I hope people think that, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good, and and you can definitely feel that it's a little bit fresher. And I want to um touch on the point that you're saying it's like we're not metallic we're not gonna, but you're going to reach the fans that you need to reach and you're going to leave a body of work that you're proud of that's all yours as well and that must be you know a special kind of feeling that's worth more than bloody 100 metallicas if you so, know what i mean yeah yeah i mean the one thing that chris has always said and and i do agree we have to be happy yeah ultimately it's about us and that's like anybody with any job that they do or any career path they take, you have to be happy. Um, and yeah, yeah, if they see we're happy, maybe, you know, that will rub off on people. But, you know, this this all lies on me. Um, it's about being held back. It's about being judged. Um, the, the kind of concept is... Um, about someone beating me down to the point where I don't believe in myself anymore. Mm. And then it takes one person to wake me up and kick me in the butt and give me that support. And yeah, wake me up. And that's what that song's about. Um, but it is also about being judged as well, you know, um, as I've said to people, it doesn't matter who you are, you will get judged for everything that you do. Yeah. Even the people that you think are going to support you are going to judge you. And I'm not just talking about what color you are, what you say, what size you are, even down to what you eat, everything you are being judged. And yeah. sometimes it can knock you down so far that sadly, People take their own lives and yeah. there's been such, uh, without being negative, children, uh, child suicide is so high. And a yeah. lot of that is an extension of the bullying. Yep. Trolls online, you know? Social media. And, yeah. And, and the sad thing is that the people that are doing this, they just want to look cool for a few seconds you know, they want they want people to hit the like button on their disgusting comments. And these people, some of them are parents themselves, where we teach our children not to bully because it's wrong. Yet they'll go online and go, well, this person's a blah, blah, and that person's disgusting. Oh, that person should kill themselves. And it's just like, what a world we live in. Yes. where a comment can change everything for you and and comments have changed things for me and I'm not talking about people attacking me on appearance because of course I've had that and you know what you could say what you want people could say well because I'm you know I'm 44 now I really don't care there was a point when it it did bother me and I, I couldn't understand why people were judging me on appearance and not via the voice um but now, oh, you know, I'm not bothered about that by, you know, anymore. I mean, it just doesn't phase me. Um, I want people to, to judge me on the voice, but yeah. that's not always going to happen. But as I said, there's, th there comes a point in your life where you can brush that to one side. And as I say, someone arrives in your life who wakes you up. And I, I, do you know what? I'll tell you who that person is. It's Lindsay, Lindsay Schoolcraft. Yeah. um who left cradle of filth um i hadn't really spoken to her in a whole time in cradle of filth um and i didn't want to and it's nothing to do with her i just didn't want anything to do with that part yeah, anymore and you know she'd send me a few birthday messages and hi how are you and blah 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 and i'd reply back very politely but i just didn't want to know and then I don't know we just got to talking we got talking and we found that we had a lot in common, a lot in common. Yeah. And it was like, we were at, we were mirrored. Our lives were mirrored and she woke me up. She was like, you know, she said things like, you're the queen, you're the original, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yep. People can laugh at that comment, but that were, her, they were her views. Yeah. And she's like, people want you to sing. Yeah. 
you are wasted by not singing. And she was going on at me in the nicest way. And she's like, I can do this for you. I can help you. I can do this. I can do that. And then I had a few more people, known people going, yep, she's right. You need to do this. You need to do that. And then it kind of woke me up. And that's how I'm back here now. So if anybody hates the fact that I'm doing music again, you have them to blame. Well, 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 fuck them people that hate you doing music. You're doing it for you. And I don't I don't think no. those people have any place in any scene anywhere in the world. I, I, I don't think – I think we – we got to put a lot more positivity in the world. Lindsay Schoolcraft, those albums she brought out, um, Unreal. And I recently had an interview with a guy called Her Knox from Canada who yeah. Um, was, yeah, done a few um, songs with her on his latest album. Um, well, they were really good bits on that too. Yeah. I haven't heard that yet because yeah. I'm only just sort of getting back into the social media thing. It's hard to cause... keep up with everything, eh? It really, really yeah. is for me. I'm like, as you were saying, the music reaching the people, but it's it's a different scene now than, yeah. you know, a few years ago. It's really trying to work the social media and not getting caught up in all the fucking, the political side of things as well. It's really, well, really hard. Well, it was like- when I got the Instagram account, I joined Instagram. Oh, I can't remember. A few months ago, I joined Instagram. And I turn around to some people. I'm going, it's full of women getting dressed, undressed, dressed, undressed, dressed, undressed. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's going on? Everyone's just getting their clothes on and off. And I was really confused by it all. And, uh, yeah, it's all changed. And there's that, that TikTok Obviously, yeah. I'm not going to be involved with that because, I mean, I have a son to raise and I, and the fact that I've reopened my Twitter again, um, I never really bothered. I opened it again and started posting. And I have different things I post for different things, you know, yeah. like different accounts. But ultimately, above all of this, I have a son to raise and I'm hoping I can, you know, turn him into an amazing human being where he respects all life you yeah no um, that's that's the way know. i want to be too like with my my daughters as well and you're talking about the scene and the industry and um for for, for me um i i know it was hard but like women like you really did lay the foundation in the scene and for me i had a um a, a chat with a lady and from a pond wings over in America. And we were chatting about, I was saying that the, the whole female fronted thing makes me cringe. And I think that people like myself in the industry really need to make a stand with points, as you were saying, leaving this scene in a better place than what it is and not, you know, you know focusing on the, the female fronted. As I started this interview, you're a vocalist. You've left, a, you know, a body of work. And that's the way I like to talk to people as well. But I see some of these other big media outlets that kind of make their posts like female fronted band. It's like, you don't do that with every bloody male band. I don't do that with every male dude no. I'm interviewing as well. And it kind of it no. ma- makes my skin crawl when I see that still. And I think that's, you know, I know it's, it's a little sexism. thing now, but it's one thing we need to overturn too. It's sexism. I was watching something. Oh, I actually didn't watch it, but I was, I was reading the comments and it was a lady drumming. And she was very pretty, very thin. She wasn't wearing that much. (laughs) And I was thinking, and she had something like so many million hits for her drumming. And other people said it, and, and I think it as well. If that was a man who was 400 pounds, I don't know, or I don't know if you have kilos or pounds, but... Let, let, let's say 400 pounds and he was in his shorts and he was sweaty and having a beer and he was drumming no one would have given him a second chance maybe to laugh at him because that's what people do they like to laugh at people but no way would have he had had as many hits on that video as that woman who was not wearing that much very pretty you know yeah. um how as how it is and you know a lot of people are like well what female bands are you into and I'm like oh I'm honestly not there's a reason there is one reason why I don't listen to uh many bands with women in it and that is because I don't want to get accused of copying yep so a lot of my influences Lisa Gerrard Deccan Dance yeah uh Madonna and believe it or not early Mariah Carey 
Yeah. I love uh, because she has a phenomenal voice, vision of love. I remember when I was really young, probably oh, nine or 10, standing in my front room, leaning against the wall, trying to be like Mariah Carey yeah. singing into a brush. <laughs> you know, okay, really making myself look stupid, but that's where a lot of that high stuff started. She yeah. influenced me. And the next person to influence me singing high was the Amanda Gallus. And it was that vocal line she did on the Dracula soundtrack. Danny showed me that and he's like, I want you to sing like this. And that is where it started. And then Ofra Haza from, you know, Temple yeah. of Love. Yeah. Um, very few influenced, very few, very few women have influenced me. Another influence is Alanis Morissette. Yeah. So yeah, you know, um, I know a lot of women on the scene, they're influenced by Madonna, by Kylie Minogue, you know. Nothing wrong with that. We all have to start somewhere. No, you know, we could all write a song. start somewhere. But do I like many bands that are fronted by women? Not really. And it's nothing to do with them. It's no. just not my thing. Yeah. But you know what? It's their dream and we should still support them. And it's no one's business to drag them down. And yeah, I don't like the female fronted tag, but that's that was there for a reason. And yeah. that's because there wasn't much equality there still really isn't, you know, um, yeah, without going could. into the sex of thing. But I still know that when men see a woman in a band, it isn't, they're not sizing her up for her talent. They're sizing her up for what she looks like first. Yeah. That's likely to be how it's always going to be, you know. And can we say, is that why I'm not so successful? Because I'm bigger? Yeah, it probably is. Uh, I'm being as blunt and brutally honest as possible. How many people want to see a larger woman on the front cover of a magazine? Me? Not many. <laughs> yeah, not I know. But many. for me, it's always been music and, um, and, and talent. But, and, um, you know, I grew not, up in a house as a single mother funny. and sisters. Not for those that are running those magazines, though. Yeah, they it's... want someone who is picture perfect to sell that magazine. And unfortunately, as I say, I know I shouldn't have really touched on this subject because it could raise many things, but that's how it's always going to be. So the female fronted tag was there because I guess we wanted people to listen to us. Yeah. You know, we wanted to be treated equally. I don't know if that's had that effect, but I try not to use female fronted band as a tag anywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, it is what it is, whether yep. you like what anyone's doing or not. You either listen or you don't. You don't need to be nasty and disgusting and be little people. Because as I said, it all leads back to this whole mental health thing of people literally do take their own lives because of trolling, you yep. know, and it goes back to all eyes on me again. It's like, well, eyes are going to be on me now, judging me for what I'm doing right now. But luckily, I'm in a stronger state of mind where I go, OK, cool. You don't like me. You think I'm this. You think I'm that. That's fine. Crack on. Go listen to somebody else. Yeah, that's, that's it. Not, it's not being arrogant. It's just like, oh, I'm raising a child. Yeah. You know, I've got a job to do as well as try and entertain people, you know. Yeah. Make no. them happy. Uh, Sarah, this has been an absolutely great chat. Um, everyone, all eyes on me, as Sarah was saying, um, drops May 2nd. You all head over to Bandcamp now. You can grab the Beauty of Deception. Um, buy it, grab it. Um, fuck Spotify as well. <laughs> buy the music if you love it. Sarah, um, thank you very much. Do you have any last words, shout outs, or thank yous you'd like to add in there? Yeah, I'd say that uh, maybe if anyone's still listening and haven't turned it off, <laughs> you might want to go and get yourself a vodka or a coffee to wake yourself up. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really grateful for your time. I really, really am. You're um, actually, you're my second interview, um, but you're the, the first one as a result of uh, say Corey and Corinne backing me up and helping me, you know? Um, so I'm really, really grateful for your time. I'm I'm sorry that I talk loads. No, no, no. I I I, I, li I like that. This is something I do. I come into these interviews um, 
as a conversation. I work with some of the big labels and they only give you a certain amount of time. So when I can actually have a full conversation like this, Sarah, it's an absolute pleasure. So thank you very much. Well, may, maybe split the interview up into two sections and pre-warn people yeah, that I don't up. Whereabouts are you anyway? Whereabouts do you? Oh. 